Hello my soccer universe. Today not uh, any of the pomp that I had yesterday. Um, yeah, this was some of the most harrowing scenes I've ever watched uh, while watching a game. I I have not seen what happened in 2003 with Mark Vivian Foy, but uh, that was what immediately coming to mind yesterday. Um, I am wearing Finland. Um, although it didn't in many ways feel quite right, but then I said no. I mean, I didn't even shuffle. Yes, there have been changes uh, with regard to Denmark's chances, but I said I want to keep Eriksen right here and then I'm wearing Finland. Uh, it, it still feels somewhat appropriate to do so. And yeah, uh, we all know what happened. Uh, Christian Eriksen collapsed on the field and had to be had to be given CPR. Had to be revived. Fortunately, he is alive. He is conscious, and as far as I know, he is even speaking. So uh, I think these are the best news ever. Because I mean, I've, when I've seen the scenes, and I I was alone up here watching. Uh, I I went down, and I thought I think the star of, uh, went down to my wife, and I said I think that the star of Denmark may have just died. Uh, it was not clear at all at this point and yeah it's difficult to talk uh, about anything I will still try to do that uh, but yeah I think let's yeah I would say let's go right into it let's start with that game although it's uh, chronologic and not what happened first but I, th I feel this needs like the Danish players, I feel this needs to. We, I need to get this out of my way, uh, and then we can uh, talk about other things uh, as well. Um, and it actually started also well. I this was the parking seemed full, although officially there were only fifteen thousand two hundred there. But it really seemed like uh, there many fans there a good atmosphere it was also you know a scandinavian duel so you know there's a little bit banter going forth but it's all good natured it was finland's first game at the euros uh the the emotions were already running high and up until the point where uh, uh the collapse of ericsson happened i mean denmark was after a short period of finding themselves clearly the better team and Eriksen was key in that I mean he was left right and center of that I mean it wasn't I I, I don't want to say it was a great game but it was a really uh with the atmosphere around and the Danish team really trying to show yeah we should be considered at least one of the outsiders to the two this title we are good and I think the sh everything that I've said positive about Denmark uh was there but also negative the finishing is missing and yeah um i also i really enjoyed the jersey match match of which it makes the decision of having italy play in white uh the day before even more staggering we had denmark and i know because of the white sleeves the uh finland will not play in their white jersey or jerseys which are the better ones but the red against the blue it looked everything about this game looked fine until Ericsson collapsing on the side with no one around it and you know uh, the instinct uh, at first is yeah he's lying there uh is he still yeah okay get the people the medical staff from our, from our team but then you could see already within a few minutes uh, a few seconds uh they really try maybe the the, the, the tongue was swallowed over, over there but then the players are going for the paramedics come here come 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 here and then i think for me, the, the strongest scene, and uh, that's why I chose it also uh, as the thumbnail, was when the Danish players, I mean, it was Simon Kier and I think Delaney and also Karl Kasper Schmeichel in there, they had the uh, uh, wherewithals to kind of, let's form a wall and let's shield him from the cameras. Uh, this was such a strong moment to me. Uh, that they could not face watching it. I could actually understand it in, in a way because, you know, um, it's better to let the paramedics work there and let's shield everyone. And you can see just Simon Kia was uh, watching uh, there uh, what's happening. Uh, then there were other stuff uh, that were kind of shielding him. Um, and it was a little bit hard to watch in the sense that a, you want to know what's happening and then you suddenly see, I mean, 
I work as a paramedic for uh, a bit more than the, the, than a year. You see the scenes where they're really giving him C C CPR, and at that moment I knew, oh, shit's gonna about to hit the fan, probably. But um, fortunately, that was not the case. Uh, I think it was good, and to that the cameras then eventually kept the distance. I think it was good that the Finnish players went to the sidelines, uh, leave everything alone there. The referee also talking. Keep, you know, keep it. Uh, other things are more important now. The game is not important. I actually, uh, at that moment, I I didn't care about that game. And in, 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 in one sense, it was all about. And I think I was not, not the only one. I mean, I, I think I tweeted out a picture of Ericsson's shirt without, I didn't want to say anything. Uh, I just, you know, hope he's alive. Uh, the, I mean, the other scene, and I think this probably should not have been shown, show, 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 although it was another strong scene, when the um, wife, girlfriend of Ericsson came onto the field and had to be consoled by Simon Kier. Uh, it was not an easy watch at all. Uh, but you couldn't take your eyes off, off it in many ways because you wanted to know what's happening. Uh, most of fans stayed in the stadium, seemingly, and then, you know, uh, the photo came through. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. On the one side, it was a really, really uh, re a good relief to see him with open eyes uh, taking off the field. But, you know, I thought when they took him off the, off the, off, off, off the field with the blankets around, Whew, this looked to me even worse in many ways. Um, but yes, he was conscious. The photographer took the picture. Uh, I'm not sure what I think about that. Uh, but it was a welcome relief to everyone that at least this was happening. So then, uh, and I'm still conflicted about it, but I mean, seemingly UEFA uh, did not put any pressure on the players and they said, you know, uh, it, it, there are the two options. Either you play, you finish the game tonight, or you play tomorrow at 12. Uh, I, there was initially, I have not had this now. I mean, I, I hear the conflicting stuff there. Ericsson talked to the players and said, please continue on playing. I think the players in the end decided it's better to play the game uh, the same day uh, because, you know, if you sleep over it, you will not sleep anyway. I mean, you might as well play it now. Uh, and I think it was rightfully said by a commentator here on Austrian TV that said, you know, uh, if you need to deal with something, maybe it's uh, good to do something that you love doing. Um, there were, of course, the scenes with the fans, the Finnish fans, or the we had most of the Finnish fans uh, scanning Christian, and then the other side, Ericsson, the back and forth. I mean, all great scenes. Um, when the Danish players came out, the Finnish players, uh, you know, giving them the applause, and, and, so, and then the game happened. And you could clearly see that the Danish team was not there. I mean, uh, after going through, I mean, the, uh, the emotional uh, baggage there, they were not there. And it was clear on the goal that Poyan Pavel scored. Uh, Kasper Schmeichel doesn't make a mistake like that. And yes, the ball was tricky because, you know, it well, it, it came via the ground uh, from a relatively short distance. So it uh, definitely didn't look good. But um, a goalkeeper, if you get the hand on it, you can probably save it. And then also when the penalty was given, uh, the Paulson was clipped with a knee on his heel. Looked a little bit weird at first, but uh, yeah, penalty, penalty. And then uh, Heuberg, you could see he's overthinking. I mean, uh, the, he, the most natural thing is uh, to hit, if you hit it with your right, to go to, the, to your left corner. And if you hit it hard, he actually wanted to do it too smart because he was clearly not out there and, and he wanted to kind of trick the keeper and go on the other side. And so Denmark loses the opener. I can only speculate what this will mean for Denmark going forward, but I probably think they're done uh, in many ways. Uh, they might sneak through because, yeah, we can go to the other game uh, to Belgium and Russia. Russia really didn't show up there much. Uh, Belgium didn't have it hard. I mean, first goal came from across from Mertens that uh, is then where Lukaku is offside. And uh, to be honest, uh, it's a little weird of a rule uh, that the offside is not looking there. But then the Russian defender touches it. It's a new uh, phase of play. And Lukaku puts it in the internet. It's 1-0. Of course, he runs to the camera. 
and stay strong christian or something like that um that more or less settled the game uh also nice jersey matchup i i i think the those two gels together very well as well um Munier had to come off for Castania, who is probably out for the tournament with a facial in, in injury. But, you know, I didn't see that because, you know, they, of course, kept the focus on the Denmark-Finland game, which uh, there was an over overlap for a good half hour. Uh, so Munier came on and uh, after a goalkeeping made a mistake, who basically makes a save right into his path, Munier uh, gets the 2-0 and that was the game. Uh, there was no, 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 no much coming either from Russia. I mean, Russia, the team seemed a little bit stalled in many ways. And then uh, Meunier plays, plays later pass on Lukaku and was a typical Lukaku goal. He takes, of course, you see it here, second goal of the tournament. Of course, he scores a, a double. And that was that. And then in the early game, uh, Switzerland was really hard done uh, with only getting a 1-1 against Wales. Largely the better. It was not a good game. There were not many fans there either. Uh, but Switzerland was largely the better team uh, who definitely should have scored. Uh, I think there was a great chance in the first half by Fabian Scher, who would have back heel heel with a few headers. The goal came then after a Shakiri corner uh, and Bolo heads it in. And then I think the probably quick 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 question of a decision is that in 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 the end Shakiri came off because uh, there was really a moment where I thought Switzerland is really pushing for the second goal and then uh, from uh, the side, uh, you know, a corner kick for Wales who then had to try, but uh, well, really, really no, no, I'm not trying where from the corner kick cross in and they completely forget to mark the tallest man on the field with Kiefer Moore, um, who kind of glances the header into the net. Um, Switzerland thought they had gotten the winner through Gavranovic, but he was clearly offside um, and Switzerland cannot find the winner, which probably will hurt their chances quite a lot because, you know, with only one point, uh, you have to play in Turkey, you have to play Italy next. Um, you worry a little bit for Switzerland, to be honest. Wales, really, that was a rather poor performance. You can already see in Group B, uh, it's still Belgium, Finland and Denmark, uh, given the chances to advance, uh, has to be seen. I mean, Finland with that win, probably sitting quite pretty overall. Uh, let's see the projections. For now, uh, Italy, Switzerland, Turkey still, with Italy now firmly uh, favored to finish in first place. Um, let's see how this will move forward, as I said, uh, it's a tougher path for Italy if they finish actually in first. Uh, Belgium also, uh, with that loss of Denmark, you have a hard time seeing Belgium not finishing in first and the next game is against Denmark. So um, yeah, it's kind of difficult there. Um, I have to say with the win for Finland, they really look now poised to finish in second. Uh, given the circumstances, I have to say you have to feel with the Finns a little bit because this was their big moment and they get the win and they will always have this little, as little asterisk there, to be honest. So yeah, um, cannot say much. It, it honestly didn't even feel right that Finland won that game in many ways. I mean, they had one shot on goal. Uh, but so, yeah, I, I can see that they were overjoyed, the muted response uh, as well. You know, it, it's hard to deal. It, this situation is really hard to do the right thing because you don't know, you never dealt with that before. So, yeah. Um, Denmark at the moment is still among the best, projected to be among the best three on uh, the best third place teams. So they would move on. And we have a few changes in the bracket again. Uh, namely that Finland is now playing against Swiss, Switzerland and again Switzerland would be rewarded with a quarter-final uh, if they finish in second and Italy with a quarter uh, against the Netherlands which is much more winnable than a quarter-final for Italy against Belgium uh, there. Denmark would now play against France which under normal circumstances would not be an easy game uh, moving forward and with that win Belgium also improved their rating enough to go ahead of France and they would now be in the final and of course favored there. As for over favorites as I said Belgium increased a little bit now the win you know a little bit more certainty while the other teams have not played yet. 
Denmark falling now be, uh, below the Netherlands and Germany because uh, that loss really hurt their chances. Uh, and you know, Finland shows up in the top 20 at the moment. So that's also good, uh, an interesting sign. Um, and Russia dropping out of there. Today we have uh, three matches. It's far, far faster, and I thought this is actually almost a perfect one for me because we have two really good ones with England and Croatia and Netherlands, Ukraine, and then my home country is playing, although I'm not looking forward to that one at all, as you know, meanwhile. That was it for me. Uh, I hope we have good news. The most important is that this guy is with us still, and I think that's all what I want to say for now there and yeah let me know your thoughts below give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this uh video it was dramatic traumatic for the players yesterday so we have to see how it will go on for denmark i will talk to you soon with hopefully much happier stuff bye